you might have hormonal imbalance, but you wonder what the signs are, I've got you. Tune into this video because I've been up and down that road and I'm past it and I'm feeling good. I will tell you what the signs of hormonal imbalance in females are so you know what to look for and you know when you need to get help. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Kelly Alexa, even though I look a little bit differently today because I let my hair dry kind of funny and I decided to just go for it. I did a little curly thing. Anyway, I'm Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. And for those of you that have been tuning into my channel for a while, you know I'm also somebody who's very passionate about helping women understand the importance of hormonal imbalance and how to get hormones balanced because when you do get your hormones balanced, it is life-changing. I first started getting blood work done and getting my hormones addressed and going on bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment in 2015. So I have now been on this for about five, seven, seven years. And I can tell you that with each year, it gets better and better and better. And I would never even consider going off of this. And I'm only looking to incorporate more uh, of these tremendous longevity, wellness, anti-aging, um, health optimization techniques. So. One of the number one things that I encounter when I'm coaching women for weight loss is women like, like myself back in the day don't recognize the signs of hormone imbalance. They don't recognize that when their bodies are starting to change, usually around the age of 40, that what they're experiencing is hormone imbalance and what they typically tend to think is that this is a fitness problem or strictly a weight loss problem. And so they tend to treat it that way. Well, I'm here to tell you what the signs and symptoms are as far as what my experience was and certainly what I know based on my own um, independent research and from working with three different functional medicine doctors, I'll tell you what to look for so that you know, hey, if this is what I'm experiencing in my own life, this is these are the red flags where you know that you need to start getting help as far as your hormones are concerned. So let's get started learning a little bit more about what the signs are of hormone imbalance in females. All right, my friends, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. And also when you subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell button so that you're notified whenever we put a new video out. We are putting out close to four, sometimes five videos every week now. I am back and I am back with a vengeance. So make sure again that you're not only are subscribed, but that you're hitting that cute little bell button. Thank you so much and let's get started. All right, everybody, let's start chatting about the signs of hormonal imbalance in females. And I am sorry, I told you guys that uh, I let my hair dry when I was, I, I washed my hair, I, I have naturally very straight hair. And uh, I decided to just let my hair air dry and I was outside uh, just getting some sun. I decided that I just needed some vitamin D. And I was just laying out, not even really thinking about my hair. And when I came inside, it, it was like, I don't know if it was the Texas humidity or whatever, but I had some like waves going on. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go for it. And um, anyway, I put a, a little bit of this sticky stuff in my hair and it still is sticky on my fingers. So I apologize if you see me doing this throughout my video. Um, anyway, um, so my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you my experience and also share with you that for those of you watching this video, I'm going to be giving you some strong urgings and some strong like, you know, please get some help, you know, get a functional medicine doctor. And that's because I want to save you the, the pain and, and the regret that I have and that others have like me of wishing that you'd done things sooner. So, just know that that's where I'm coming from. Um, I remember being told that my body would change at age 40 and I remember thinking that that was so dumb that, you know, why would like, do our bodies know, oh, I'm turning 40 and now I'm just gonna change. But that really is about what happened. I was going through a divorce at the time and my body definitely started to show signs 
of of changing. And the funny thing is, is at the time, I didn't, you know, I remember noticing certain changes, but I never put all of them together. And I, I know that I'm like a lot of you. I just remember never once in my mind was I thinking, oh, my hormones are changing. Oh, I wonder if I'm in perimenopause. I just didn't think that at all. Never. So I, I really hope that many of you who are watching this, who are experiencing these symptoms, don't, what I want you to get out of this, here's a, here's a, a spoiler alert to, to get to the end of the video. Don't wait. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, the number one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get blood work done and get to see a, a great functional medicine doctor. And what you don't wanna do is think that you can go to your primary care doctor or your OBGYN or an endocrinologist and just say, hey, I think that my hormones are in trouble, can you help me out? And that they'll be able to help you out because nine times out of 10, those types of doctors are probably gonna steer you wrong. Um, now, let me get back to the symptoms first and then I'll close with a little bit more elaboration on that. So around age 40, these are some of the symptoms that I started to encounter, not necessarily in this order. Number one, my body temperature changed um, and I started to sweat differently, meaning that I didn't get night sweats necessarily, but I do remember that I had worn secret deodorant my whole life and I had never, ever, ever had moisture underneath my arms. I'd never had what they call pit stains. I just never felt actual sweat underneath my armpits from, from actual sweat, just like, I mean, outside of a workout. And very suddenly, I just had this situation where I did, where I would just be in a social situation and I would feel sweat underneath my armpits and be very, very um, paranoid about it, very nervous. And so I remember I started wearing a lot, that's when I started wearing tank tops a lot. I was very um, nervous to wear long sleeves because I, I didn't wanna have pit stains. I thought they were just disgusting. I just, I didn't wanna feel sweat on my clothes. That was one of the first thing I noticed. And then sometimes I'd be out and about and I would feel sweat dripping down the back of my back. So that was one of the first things, body temperature. Second, of course, weight gain, very sudden weight gain. I was working out with a trainer at Lifetime Fitness. He was the one who noticed my boobs got really big and kind of just swollen. Um, he asked if I was pregnant, I remember, cause he's like, it wasn't that I, I, I looked like I had a big pregnant belly. He's just like, you know, your, your boobs, you know, when, when you're pregnant, your boobs just suddenly will kind of just look very large and swollen. And, and my boobs got really big, really fast. And, and I also gained weight around my middle. Um, and it was just very, very fast. And I hadn't changed my diet or my exercise. So, so that happened. I also broke out in this skin condition, I would say. Now, I will tell you this, um, I will link up to this other video that I did on hormonal acne because while a lot of you probably will be dealing with hormonal acne, I do urge you to watch that video because it's not always hormonal acne when you get bumps later on in life. In my case, and it took years to figure it out, um, it actually turned out that this these rock hard bumps that, that presented themselves all over my neck, my arms, my chest, my back, ended up being a food reaction uh, to corn. Crazy, I know. It took forever to figure that out. But now all I do is I just don't consume corn and I don't get bumps, ever. But all these doctors thought it was hormonal acne and put me on all kinds of crazy drugs. Um, and um, so skin, body temperature, weight gain, and I started to get migraines out of the blue. Um, I had very heavy bleeding um, on my period, like where almost, it was almost like I was hemorrhaging. It was like, I was just have, I was not on the pill. I had gone off the pill for a while and I was just bleeding almost the whole month. And so of course I went to my OBGYN and of course her answer was to put me back on the pill. Um, 
she said I had cysts on my ovaries and their reaction, of course, to that was not to do any kind of operation or to remove the cysts, but to put me on the pill. They put me on a horrible, horrible version of the birth control pill. All versions of the birth control pill are bad and are going to jack your hormones and destroy your future. If you want to read a really good book about the pill, read, and I'll link it down below. Um, I believe it's by jo, Jolene Brighton, uh, Beyond the Pill. Um, excellent, excellent read. It will enlighten you. I mean, I knew that the pill was bad. I knew that it jacked your hormones. But when you read her book, you will understand it. She is excellent at, at describing what the pill does to you. Um, but low, low estrin fay is what they put me on, and that made my migraines more intense. Um, I also gained 25 pounds in two months. Um, so, you know, it was just a very crazy time. Skin problems, body temperature problems, um, weight gain, more weight gain, bleeding problems, um, period problems, cramping. Oh, this stuff is so, so sticky. I wish I had a towel right now. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think if I had anything else. Now, um, some of the pro some of these symptoms that I didn't have that a lot of that are very common that other people will have um, hair loss. Hair loss is very common with, and I I will say I do have this, but I don't have it to the degree that a lot of other people have. So I do have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. And it is very common to experience hair loss. I experience hair loss in that pretty much every time I wash my hair, you know, I will lose a lot of hair. Um, but I'm not losing hair like a lot of people do when they when they go through hormone imbalance where they're, you know, noticing chunks of hair. I've never had that kind of issue. Um, and also thank God for liquid collagen <laughs> because it's made my hair just grow so crazy and so thick that it's not even, a, it's not, all the hair loss is not even a problem. So hair loss can be a problem. Uh, loss of sex drive, that was never an issue for me. <laughs> um, it's an issue for a lot of women. Sleep problems, actually that was a problem for me. Um, I forgot about that. So I, I started having a problem falling asleep and I was taking Excedrin PM every single night to fall asleep for the better part of phew, nine years, I think. Um, and when I first went on bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment within two days, just the progesterone made it possible for me to go, get off of Excedrin PM every single night. And I've slept naturally every single night ever since then. That's how powerful progesterone can balance your sleep. It's amazing. Um, so my sleep was off. That's, that's very common. So sleep, skin, sex drive, um, that's usually affected by testosterone, um, and testosterone, ladies, don't be fooled. You need it. Testosterone is not just for men. Testosterone affects your libido. Testosterone affects your ability to lose weight. Testosterone affects your energy, all kinds of things. Um, energy definitely is something that I started to notice later when my adrenals were shot and cortisol was, was affected later. Um, insulin resistance was something that I was diagnosed with very early on. Um, my first couple of doctors weren't really into addressing that. And I have come to realize with my current doctor, that is one of the most significant things to address for women. And that's what I talk about in, in a lot of my current videos and future videos. You'll hear me talking about that because that is what I have learned is when women are entering into perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, almost all of us are dealing with some form of insulin resistance. And if you're not addressing it with dietary changes, that's when you're really going to deal with uh, weight, weight gain and inability to lose weight issues. Um, I've transformed my entire, <laughs> my entire life by going keto and combining that with fasting and intermittent fasting the last year. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds. And that before that, I was dieting, exercising, working out with a trainer, eating the healthiest foods you can imagine, but the furthest thing from keto you can imagine, and I couldn't lose a pound, and I was carrying an extra 25 to 30 pounds for the past probably decade, 
and went keto at the nudging of my functional doctor after she tweaked my hormones a little bit more and just effortless weight loss effortless body transformation best thing i ever did if you're interested in learning more just go check out my keto playlist um, feel free to reach out to me to ask for any you know uh, questions i'm happy to answer questions about keto um, it's it's just the most wonderful answer to weight loss for women who are experiencing basically the inability to lose weight because of hormonal imbalance okay so that's a sidebar Back to the symptoms. Let me summarize to see where we are. Skin problems, libido, weight gain, uh, mood swings, um, body temperature problems. That would include, like me, you know, sweating, body temperature changes during the day, night sweats. Um, I said sleep problems, skin problems, libido, um, um, vaginal dryness. Um, that can, that's a completely different issue from libido, meaning libido is more about desire for sex where vaginal dryness is an actual physical symptom. Um, let's see, um, energy, mood swings, skin problems, hair loss, um, adult acne, I mean, migraines, headaches, um, what, I mean, could it get any worse? I'm pretty sure these, that's about what I would summarize as the top symptoms. But what's interesting is those are a lot. And yet a lot of those are things that so many women will ignore and kind of just attribute to life and whatever but what they'll do is they'll hone in on the fact that they're gaining weight so they'll ignore the sex problem and they'll you know a lot of women don't make sex in their in their marriage and their relationships a priority i don't get that never understood that um a lot of women will under will will ignore skin problems you know and they'll they'll not make that a priority and, and maybe they're just not as focused on um, their looks, they're just thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't want to be shallow, whatever. But, um, when it comes to their weight, they will hone in on that. And usually that's the problem is that I, and I've talked about this in my other videos, and this is what I did too. They will really focus on punishing themselves with excessive cardio and, and just like, okay, I'm not losing weight, so I'm going to diet harder. I'm going to work out harder. And the problem is, is when you do that, you diet harder, you work out harder, you work out more, you work out longer, and then you, res you know, restrict your calories even more, you're making your hormones even worse. And so then on top of that, you're not addressing your hormones. You're making your hormones worse. Then you're stressed about it. It's just becoming this, this snowball effect. So it's so important that when you're nearing the age of 40, and some of these symptoms might present themselves to you in their 30s, hormonal imbalance is not isolated to age 40 plus. That's typically when it's going to start, and that's when you should expect it to start. But it absolutely can be happening in your 30s. In fact, I've interviewed two women in their mid-20s who have experienced massive hormonal imbalance and have gone on to, you know, had, had, had to go through year of healing and some of them are on bioidenticals. Um, I will link up to both of those interviews down below. One was with Lori Christine King and one was with Alex Mazurko. Um, Alex de dealt with adrenal fatigue. Lori Christine King has been on bioidenticals. She's not even 30 yet. So, Hormonal imbalance is not isolated to just being 40 plus. That's when it is most common. So if you, in summary, ladies, if you are watching this and you're experiencing these, these symptoms, here's what your next step is. Um, and, and you should know as a sidebar, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations with women because I've been down this road. I, I know what... I, I, I talked to so many women about this topic. Um, 
that I got to the point where I was, I was fielding so many questions via email, via DM, and it was just constant all the time that it was taking up so much of my time. I realized like, why don't I just offer to get on the phone with people if, if they're getting to this place in their life where they're utterly confused and, and they just need direction with where they are in their life with hormonal imbalance, because really that's, that's what it takes is having all of their questions answered, understanding what they need to do next, and then deciding like, how do we find the right doctor for you? Um, and then getting you set up with blood work and then figuring out, you know, what you can afford. It's not that I'm going to be the doctor for you. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. It's not that I'm going to prescribe the medication for you. Again, obviously, I'm not the doctor. But what I do and I do really well is sit down and have a consult, again, usually on the phone, um, with women and answer all of their questions because women are usually, just like I was, completely like, wait a second, what? They have no idea how to get started. They are confused about bioidenticals. They've been told a different story from their OBGYN. They've been told a certain line of truth from their primary care doctor. And they need to understand why this isn't true, why this isn't true, why bioidenticals are okay. They have a, a billion questions. So just know as a sidebar, that is something that I offer. If it is in your budget, I do half an hour consults for $250. I do hour long consults for $450. If that's of interest to you, I'm happy to do that. I don't do, a, I don't make room for a lot of those consults. Um, I just don't, I don't have the bandwidth in my schedule, but if you're interested, that is something that I can help you with. That said, you don't need to do that with me. What I'm telling you, you, you need to do is very simple. Um, if you're experiencing these symptoms, you need to get comprehensive blood work. I'm going to uh, set up a link down below to a company called Ulta Lab Tests that I work with and they will save you a lot of money on getting comprehensive blood work done. And what I recommend is that you get blood work done before you go see a doctor because this, I can explain why later, it would be easier for me to explain in a consult with you, but trust me, this is how you save yourself about two to $300 um, with, by, with a consult. You'll save yourself a step and an appointment by getting your blood work done before you go see a doctor. So get your blood work done first, then you go see a functional medicine doctor. Heck, I'd, I'd suggest you go see my functional medicine doctor because she's in Austin, Texas. She takes telemedicine appointments. She, she changes lives. She's changed my life. She's wonderful. You get your blood work done. You go see a functional medicine doctor. You get on a customized for you bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment program. And then once you're started with that, you know, if what you're interested in is losing weight, that's when weight loss can really work for you. If you just keep trying to lose weight on your own and you ignore your hormones, you are just trying to climb Mount Everest um, with a tooth, you know, with toothpicks. It's just, it's going to be very difficult. Don't do that. Don't, don't waste your time. Don't think that hormones are going to fix themselves. Don't think it's going to get easier as you get older. It's only going to get harder. That's the hard, cold truth. But let me just tell you this in closing. Okay. If you address your hormones, you're, I'm 53 years old, you guys. I feel better about myself and my future than I did when I was 30, than I did when I was 20. I am excited about turning about the next, the rest of my 50s. I'm excited to turn 60. I'm excited for my 70s. I'm excited for my 80s. I mean, when you get your hormones balanced and you're on bioidenticals, like your whole future and aging is a whole different world. And it's a great world. It's, I mean, it's not, but, but the other road when you're not, I mean, I see people who look 20, 30 years older and they feel 20, 30 years older. Everything can change when you're on bioidenticals. I urge you, if you can at all, if it's, if it's within your budget. And trust me, it's not as expensive as you think. Um, I might as well close and, and share that with you because I'm fine telling you. Um, I spend for my bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment every month, it costs me about $450 for all of my medication. Um, now my last doctor, I was spending about $250. So I have doubled what I'm spending 
but I've also quadrupled my results. I mean, I was with my last doctor and God bless him, he's a good doctor. He's the one that my, my husband goes to right now. I think my husband's gonna switch to my doctor though. I mean, it's just, I, I'd just rather have us both go to the same doctor. So it's no, it's no hard feelings. He's doing a great job for my husband, but the truth is, um, he was doing a great job for me, but one of the most important things for me was to lose weight and I wasn't, he wasn't doing it. And I go to this doctor and transform my body. So sometimes you got to put your foot down and say, look, I'm paying you. You need to do, you need to do a job for me. And if you're not doing a job for me, it's time for me to move on. Okay. Enough of that. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I want to hear any and all of your questions about hormonal imbalance down below in the comments. Please let me know if this video was helpful. Please let me know what questions you have. And again, I do have a lot of other videos that I've posted on this. And of course, as I referenced before, the tie between keto, intermittent fasting, weight loss, and hormonal imbalance, check out my keto playlist. I will link that up here at the end. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time on The Kelly O Show. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. As I mentioned before, I am linking up my keto playlist because of course it is appropriate if you're experiencing a weight loss stall due to hormonal imbalance. Check it out and I hope again it helps.